I believe everyone should do yoga. I believe we're already doing yoga. It's just connecting the movements to breath. And through connecting the movements to breath, we connect to intentions. It's just an intention of way, the way that you're living. So Keith, tell me, initially, when you were playing ball at uh, A&M, you wanted to be recruited into the league, but what happened? Well, being at Texas A&M, um, I played five years there, and playing linebacker, we were known as linebacker U, so for me, uh, I had to kind of wait my turn. And in that, my last two seasons, being at A&M, I became All-American. I had a lot of success. And uh, come draft day, yes, I was prepared to go uh, and be drafted. And that didn't happen. You know, my, my road to the NFL was kind of just, you know, up, up in the air. So from that, I got a call from uh, Coach Mike Dicker, uh -huh. who was taking over the, the New Orleans Saints job. And when he, he called me, he's like, son, I don't know why you slipped in the draft, but I want to give you a chance. And if you come here, I'll give you an opportunity to play. And I had always, from growing up in Texas, you know, Dallas, watching the Cowboys, knowing who Mike Dicka is and, mm -hmm. and was as a player, uh, I figured if I could play for this guy, I could play for anybody. And sure enough, I came in and became a starter uh, my first year in the league. And then after that is where you played for the Jaguars. And that's when you got hurt. I became mm -hmm. a starter. And, you know, week two is when it happened. We were playing the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I was on the backside of this play. I knew it was coming. I was anticipating a play coming. And as I go in for the hit, uh, we collide. And, and typically, in, the, in collisions like this, you know, the defensive guys get up and celebrate. And this particular time, uh, I wanted to get up and I'm speaking to myself to get up and my body's not responding. What was going through your mind when you're trying to get up and your body is not responding? What were you thinking at that moment? It's like an hour body experience when you know your body's, you know, something's not right with your body, mm -hmm. but you can't feel a thing. But your mind knows something is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a really far out experience. So then you go, you get to the hospital. And what happens at the hospital? Uh, wh what does your doctor tell you? Well, the doctors tell us, um, you know, we don't know what's going on with you. Uh, the spine situation, you know, they diagnosed me with a spinal contusion. My C2 through C4 fused together. And so I was like, how can I play again? You know, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how can I get on the field again? You, you depend, you rely on the doctor mm -hmm. and, the, and you look for the answers from the doctor. And when the doctor, has no answers for you, what do you do? You, you got advice from someone in the hospital, not necessarily your doctor, of maybe a path you should take? Well, what I did, I went to my second opinion in South Florida, okay. and uh, who's someone, when I would have injuries, I would go in, in reference to. And in, in the care of him, someone was there, uh, the practitioner, nurse, I don't know really what she was, mm -hmm. but she came to me, she talked to me about conscious breathing. And she's, talk, she's talked to me from the academic's perspective. It was like the, the, the circulation of, of blood flow, uh, oxygen in the blood flow allows the healing. It's the natural inheritance that we've been granted to be able to tap in and access healing for ourselves by, by, mm -hmm. by tweaking these little things. And for me, and where I was, I was open to be healed. Mm -hmm. I, so I didn't have time to criticize it. I didn't have time to doubt it. It was like, this was my playbook and this was given to me. For some reason, I took this and I was compelled to do it. By pulling from this meditation though, it really helped me sustain in my mind. And as the football players start to die away and realizing that oh, I'm not gonna be able to play again, and what about my health? You know, what about my functionality? It really allowed me to, to deal with the anxiety. Uh, it allowed me to deal with the depressions of just, you know, this is the way that you perceived yourself. And then that's gone away. Yeah. So it was like a whole discovery, self-discovery of, of of my life, you know, some people could call that a, a, a like a midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. But we all have a transition period in our lives. Like we go through something in our lives and sometimes things happen for a reason. Do you believe that maybe this injury did happen for a reason because now you have, you're helping so many other people. You're helping veterans, youth at risk, um, the elderly. You're helping all kinds of people. I know healthcare workers, who are working long hours and have stress, 
How, how did how did this almost make a career change for you, really? Well, very interesting because for me, the career change it happened after years and years and years of doing work on myself, and then I had the epiphany. I want to share this. I want to teach this, and uh, and to make it as like a career. Uh, so that's that's a whole transition in itself. The the, the work of you know that I had to do in, in cleaning house within was something that was like you know the bulk of it for me to share this practice and, and to, to create uh, an understanding of this practice with our youth and our communities and bring people together mm -hmm. to expose them to something that's, that they never knew was there. Realizing that in different cases, you know, I may make mistakes in that sense, right? But then I get back on my path, you know? It's one of those things. It's, it's not fighting the duality, not exhausting my energy, but just, just holding my space.